Same deal as last time. Me, Lindsay, Tanner, Duncan. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cinco. Oh, it's cuatro. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try French. Un. Yeah. Du. Troy. I don't know French. <laughs> Get! <laughs> I haven't French since freaking elementary. Each. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Son. Ba. <laughs> she. I don't know what seven in Japanese is. Seepsin! I thought it was Nana. Nana. Ich ni no, I just san, thought it was German. Ich ni san shi go roku nana hachi. I don't know what nine is. Ba. Q. Ba, 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 ba. Oh I no, nine is Q. Bye. Bye. Yeah, nine is Q, yes. ten is Jew. You know what? Let's just restart. This is a minute of bullshit. <laughs> almost two minutes of crap. Well, keep the, don't stop the recording. Just, 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 just start the count over. Oh, fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, cinco seis. Cinco, seis. You know what's kind of hard. <laughs> Our subject isn't cool, but he thinks it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he asked for a 13 and he got a 31. <laughs> when karaoke is legal again. <laughs> yes. I mean, what's really stopping us from doing Discord again? <laughs> Lots of fucking lyrics. All right, no, no, no. We gotta start this. We gotta start this. Okay, actual episode. Everyone ready? We're ready. Ryan, you ready? <sighs> yeah. Game face. The following podcast is a member of the Pokecasters Network. Pokecasters Network supporting Pokemon content creators, their shows, and the community of Pokemon fans. To find out more, check out PokeCastersNetwork.com and find us on Twitter and Facebook. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Pokemon Adventures in Millennium. When we last left our heroes, they got fucked by bears. That is not what happened. <laughs> yeah, phrasing. That, that bear got messed Let up. Let me just start for right from the start again. The following podcast is a member of the Pokecasters Network. Pokecasters Network, supporting Pokemon content creators, their shows, and the community of Pokemon fans. To find out more, check out PokecastersNetwork.com and find us on Twitter and Facebook. Hello and welcome to another episode of Pokemon Adventures in a Millennium. When we last left our heroes, they had gotten owned by bears. That's that that's that first one's still staying in though. <laughs> <laughs> There's no removing that. Yeah, you story. can't stop that one. <laughs> so so after Damien texted you guys and explained that the cool rock that Bell found is like a hologram possessed by a time ghost or something. Mega Man, super fine robot. Super fine robot. Mega Man. Uh, then you got attacked by an Ursa Ring, and um, it swatted Myra back at the cart, and it, it slammed Brock into the mud, and it swatted Dillinger away before he could even come out of his Pokeball. Uh, but fortunately, hmm, yeah. Fortunately, Gade's grandpa, who is Angie F. I mean, Wally Wilmer. 
<laughs> he showed up. He showed up and he piled drive bear directly into mud and then he helped escort then he helps escort the entire party back to Pasturius City. There there they bought some rain gear at Rain Gear Dames, which is run by the cool rain gear gal. Uh then they uh went down to the entrance to the Great Marsh, which also happens to be the headquarters of the Pokemon Rangers for Sinnoh. And Jackie and Melvin were there. Uh, Jackie told Belle that Gentian wants to fight her in a gym battle uh, because Jackie herself is going to be escorting Gabe into the Great Marsh for his Pokemon Ranger exam. Meanwhile, Julian has taken it upon himself to teach Melvin the ways of the competent boy. <laughs> Semi competent. Let's not competent get enough. Here. Passably competent. So. Oh yeah, and a big tree fell over. What's up with that? Who knows? Oh, that's Anyways. Crazy. Anyways, we're gonna zoom back in with Belle. And Belle, you find yourself just outside the Pastoria gym. It looks it looks the most standard of all the gyms. Like it looks like a gym. You open up a dictionary and it's like gym. It's a gym. No no yep. funky retrofitting. Like every gym in Kanto before all the renovations happened. Yeah, like this has had Almost no renovations. In fact, it it looks like it was closed for a while and then opened up again after a certain period of time. Okay. That seems to fit Gentian as far as I know. I'm assuming all of my Pokemon have been healed up in between. Yes, so. you we're gonna assume that everyone stopped at the Pokemon Center, like between buying rain gear and everything. So you go inside and the door <laughs> as you open it up. This gym does not see a lot of use. Yeah. And it's pretty dark and dingy in it as well. And even as you walk through, you you like you feel like you're stepping in muck. Not the Pokemon <laughs> muck, just the general oh. muck. <laughs> Buh. Gotta get a clean and cleaner in here sometime. Is a muck muck actually like wiping the floor? <laughs> <laughs> muck! And and he wipes down the slime and then leaves a trail of different slime after him. <laughs> lovely and so you walk past the bleachers that are completely empty and into a stadium that looks pretty much like a replica of the marshlands that you guys had to walk through to get here and once you're in position a bunch of lights pop open above you some of them are just normal lights but a good chunk of them are like violet so there's like this slight purple tinge to all the light in this area huh. and then Opposite you, on the opposite side of the arena, emerges uh, with in all his purple-haired glory, and now wearing his Pokemon Ranger uniform. It's Gentian. Sup? Hello, Miss Reed. I am glad that you acquiesced to my request for a gym battle. Well, I wouldn't mind a battle, so here I am. Indeed. This is uh, nothing fancy beyond the uh, environment that I have let back into the building. Simple battle, three on three, no fancy things, no quizzes, no double battles, no video games, no ghost possessions, no giants, <laughs> no megas. Just None a... of whatever's going on with the one and uh, Veilstone. We have some solo arrays, but they don't factor in, like Flint do. Okay, that's good to know. Pastoria is very green energy city. That's nice. Probably has something to do with protecting that marsh. Indeed. The Great Marsh is the most important part of the environment. If that falls, then the entire region falls. Okay, then. Again. So, with that in mind, I imagine that you may have guessed, based on the surroundings, that I specialize in the poison type. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard about that um, ultra beast you got there. Yes, uh, my knee, Ganadel, I'm afraid is a little bit too powerful to fight you. But I hopefully there will be some other surprises in store for you. Okay, sounds cool. With that in mind, have you picked out your three Pokemon? Yep. In that case, we shall begin. He grabs Pokeball. Yep. I shall start with Swiper. Swiper! And a uh, large snake Pokemon pops out. 
black and purple with a sickening blade at the end of its tail. You know what? Bell's gonna send out Myra. Nidorina! Alright, what is Myra's speed? Uh, her speed is 10. Uh, she is not quite as fast as the Viper. You're right. Let's begin with the tried and true Poison Tail. And that is an 8, so that is going to hit. So the Viper's tail glows bright purple, and it slides and slashes at Myra. And that is going to do... That is going to be 37 physical attack, and then halved after defense. Just one, one to better. Half is 10. All right. So, a scratch. It doesn't do... Uh, it's not too bad, as you would expect. Now it is Myra's turn. Uh, Myra, you're going to use dig. Irina! Da, 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 da. Yeah, she okay. digs into the swampy muck. <laughs> hmm. Lucky for you that I have uh, allowed so much back into the gym that there's plenty of underground for her to take advantage of. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I suppose anything I try and get your Pokemon back with is going to miss. So in that case, Swiper, a turn! Go! Needle King! Milo King! It's big, purple, spiky. Looks like a larger, tougher version of Myra. Huh. Purple. Interesting. And then Myra pops out of the bottom with her dig. Roll to hit. Ah, uh, fuck one. You see the ground, like, shift under Nido King, but Myra doesn't pop out. And then, like, there's another shift, and she slowly crawls out of the ground, and it looks like she tried to pop out under Nido King and didn't expect him to weigh so much. And she looks pretty dizzy. <laughs> oh, Nidorina! Okay, uh... And now it is Nido King's turn. Y'all right, Nido King? Let's do this simple and effective. Bulldoze! That is a hit. That is going to be... 38. And then doubled after defense. 44. And it also lowers Myra's speed by 1. But I'll tell you right now, that's not going to factor in. And so yeah, Nido King... Like, slams all four legs into the ground, and then rushes at Myra, like, stirring up all the mud and dirt in the process, and slams into her. Nina! Nina, Nina! Yeah! Okay. Um. Myra, return! Uh. I am going to send out... Okay, so I will then go with Calamity! Uh, bite. Uh. Calamity. Use sand attack. That is a nine. That is going to hit. And the calamity kicks up a whole thing of muck and basically just lands directly in Nato King's eyes. Nido, Nido. Hmm. Another clever move. Well, let's just do simple then. Idol King? Actually, hang on. Let me double check what Blinded does. It's been a while since we've had to deal with that. Minus six penalty to accuracy rolls. All right, Nidal King. Let's still try and get in a poison job. And Nidal King, his fists glow purple, and he runs at Calamity, but he runs right past her. And plows into some of the bleachers, actually, knocking them over. Ooh. Hmm, good thing we don't have all the ins. We're gonna take advantage of this. Calamity, use Dragon Claw! 18. That is gonna hit. So that's 42. Attack. Alright. <laughs> that actually does a pretty good chunk of damage. Uh, you feel like maybe a th just under a third damage as Calamity runs and just kind of flails and the claw glows blue and slash. Ah, Nido King. 
Good job. And and then you see a bit of a purple haze come over Calamity, and Calamity is now poisoned. Shit. Yes, the unfortunate downside of using and not a poison Pokemon is that your Miss Calamity can be poisoned for skill. And so, end of turn Calamity uses a tick of hit points, which is a tenth rounded down. So, now it is Nato King's turn. Alright, now that she has been poisoned, let us attempt a chip away! And that's 11, so that will hit. And it is 36 physical damage. And yeah, the Nido King basically just wipes the muck out of its eyes and walks up and then just bonks Calamity on the head. Oof. Goodbye. All right. Calamity, use Sand Tomb. 15? That will hit. Yeah, so that's 34 attack, and the target is put into a vortex. All right, so... So Calamity basically starts whipping up all of the mud and into this, like, mud tornado and then whips it so fast that all the moisture dries out and it turns back into dirt and then just hucks it right at Nido King. And it starts whirling around Nido King. Nah, nah, nah! And it actually does a significant amount of damage just on impact. And Nido oh. King is definitely in the yellow now. Okay. And then you, and then like you see Calamity's eye just twitch a little bit as the poison takes a tick off. So how quickly could I throw an antidote? You could do it right now. Okay, I'm gonna throw an antidote on it, onto her. <laughs> and it just bobs onto her head and like cracks open and like <laughs> leaks onto her head, and now she's fine. Good. Come on, eat. Night, King. Yes, indeed. Well, in that case, I suppose there's no point in pulling our punches. Get that Pokemon with another chip away. And the Nano King is flailing at the sand in the sand tomb and, like, throws himself in Calamity's general direction, but comes up short and just flops in front of her. Ah, Nido! <laughs> and then Nido King loses a tick. Now it is Calamity's turn. Calamity? Use Draco Meteor. 18. That is gonna hit. And that's uh, 46 special. So, Calamity... the With Nao King kind of slumped in front of her, Calamity just kind of leans her head over. Like, you know those birds that go... Doop, doop, doop. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Calamity does that. Doop, and opens her mouth. And then you see a flash of blue. <laughs> you also see <laughs> Calamity just kind of keel backwards. <laughs> but when the dust clears, mud has been sprayed everywhere, including all over you. <laughs> but the Nato King is KO'd. <laughs> oh, very good move indeed. Alright, Will. Let's return to where we started. Swiper! Let's go again! Viper! So, Calamity, you frightened? <laughs> and yeah, the Viper looks a little bit frightened. But it is still faster than Calamity. Or wait, no, hang on a second. No, it is not. Calamity is now faster. Aha! Okay, so... You know what? I'm gonna go full Anshark and have her do a dig. Goodbye! And she, like, sticks her head straight up and then starts spinning around and then she go she goes <laughs> legs first into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> she is the weirdest scabide I have ever seen. Well, I guess if we're doing this again, I suppose there's no point in hanging on to this. And Gentian pulls out an item and it's, like, a red capsule and he pops it open and pulls out, like, a candy... And throws it at the viper, and the viper briefly goes red. Okay. And now roll that, to see if dig hits. 
that like a Pokemon knowledge to see what that was? Sure. Oakley Doakley. My best, but there's a lot of spookums here. That's to know what that was. So that was a seven. Yeah, you don't know what that was. Okay, then, well. Wolf or dig. Time. Yep. Three. Yeah, that's gonna miss. Shit. Calamity bursts out of the ground a good, like, five feet away from Viper. Uh... Well, now that that's over and dealt with. Now that that's over and dealt with, Viper, use Vienoshock. So Viper, her eyes glow a sinister violet, and she opens her mouth and fires this, like, wave of poisonous energy at Calamity. And Calamity just kind of leans over to the side, and it goes directly <laughs> past her. Oh! Get me! Oh. We're gonna use another Dragon Claw! Four. Yeah, that is going to miss... Calamity just runs completely past the survivor. She's she's she seems a little bit dizzy after doing the dig. Okay. You know what, either way. Um Calamity come back and I send out Sigurd. Honage! Hmm, another clever move. Unfortunately, we are also clever. Hmm. So Viper, use Night Slush. That is a 15, so that will hit. That is going to be 39 uh, physical. And then after defense, that is doubled because dark is super effective against ghost. Yeah. 38. 50. Sigurd, use Iron Head. 10. That will hit. So that's 39 attack. It's a good solid hit. Sigurd the shine silver and smacks directly into the Surviper. Surviper looks a bit dazed. Ugh, Viper! You cannot use the Night Slash again after that. I suppose we'll have to try a Glare! That's 18. That is going to hit. And Sigurd is now paralyzed. Oh, frick. So, Sigurd, now, that's minus four speed, and, right, you have to roll a d20 and beat a five in order to move, and if you're able to roll a 20, then free your paralysis, and then the 20 goes down by five each turn. Okay. So you roll that, the d20 first. Oh, yeah. Unless you have an item to heal it. Uh, don't have one on me. So that was an 11. Hey, so Sigurd can move. Okay. Sigurd, use Shadow Sneak. 17. That'll hit. That's 31 attack. That's another solid hit. Sigurd disappears for a moment and then appears behind the Viper and slashes at her. And that man just knocks the Viper into the yellow. Yes, quality move. But we'll see if it's enough for your Sigurd to survive the next attack. Night Slash again! What are Sigurd's evasions? Uh, he's got a physical of four, a speed of two, and a... Or a special of two, and a speed of one. That is going to miss. Oh! Just actually, actually like, just barely. So, so Viper goes to... Like, her tail glows black, and she slashes at Sigurd, and Sigurd parries it. Oh! Is um, that a melee attack? Yeah, it's physical. But does the, uh, is there a keyword in there that says melee? Yes. It hits. <sighs> because of the ability no guard. The user may not apply any form of evasion from avoiding melee attacks. However, the user may ignore all forms of evasion while making melee attack rolls. Oh, no. That was going to be so good. 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> Why do I even have this ability? <laughs> because it's good for you. It's a, it's literally a double-edged sword. <sighs> but he's still only a single-edged sword. Alright, so, well, in that case, that is 39 physical. Minus defense and then doubled. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it for him. Yeah, he's down to... He's down a lot. Wait, how much does a super potion... Super potion heals 35. 35. That's pretty paltry. Super potion heals 50 according to me. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna withdraw Sigurd, and I'm gonna send back out Myra. Mirina! And then I'm gonna toss her a super potion. Just to get her fully back up. Well, it looks like we're back at this. Very well in that case. So Wiper, try another glare. That's an 11, so that will hit, and Myra is poisoned. Not poisoned. Paralyzed. From a glare? Paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. <glare>. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking rough. <laughs> Gotta roll to see if I can get into para- paralysis. Ten. That's still enough to move this turn. Still paralyzed, but you can move this turn. We're gonna use a bite on this viper. Ten. Uh, that will hit. Okay, so that's uh, 44 attack. That is a big bite. Myra, Myra's feeling rejuvenated, and she runs up, and she just chomps directly on Survivor's midsection. Survive! Me! And this Survivor is now down in the red. <laughs> Excellent work. Well, we may only have one move left in the Survivor, but we will make a count. Use Night Slash one last time. What are Myra's evasions? Um, she's got a physical evasion of three, a special evasion of two, and a speed evasion of two. Uh, so Viper comes down with the Night Slash, but Myra must have been watching her on her Pokeball because she sidesteps, st- sidesteps that just enough. It, like, nicks her ear, but it doesn't do any damage. Myra? Or, first, let's see if we can get out of this. Six. Shoot. Um... Nope, that's enough to move. Okay. So, Myra, use double kick. So, 14 for the first one? That'll hit. So, Myra goes in with the first kick, and she, she's confident that the first kick of the double kick is enough, and just kicks the viper right in the face. <laughs> Survive! Doink. So, viper is out. <laughs> Well, that's two down and one left. Now, you remember how I said that my Nyaganadel was too powerful for you, Miss Reed? Yeah? Oh, no. Well, I regret to inform you that I have become a foster father for several a displaced ultra beast. Go! Nigel <laughs> I don't know why I rolled for that. <laughs> uh, Throws, <laughs> pulls out a blue... And like a striped Pokeball with yellow swooshes around it and opens it up and you hear a calamitous crack as this floating j- squiggly jellyfish pops out. Oh, yeah. Pokedex? Delete, delete. Nihilego, the parasite Pokemon, one of several mysterious Ultra Beasts. It's unclear whether or not this Pokemon is sentient, but sometimes it can be observed behaving like a young girl. Okay. So, Bella's a little weirded out by this, and also, like, last time we encountered an Ultra Beast. Well, also there was the giant purple poison dragon. Okay, so, um, who's going first? What's Myra's speed? Uh, her speed is 10. Oh yeah, absolutely not. Now you legal. Begin with a safeguard. 
don't know why I rolled for that either. Um, this mystical force field appears around Nyalego. And now it is immune to status afflictions. Okay, so I can still attack it. Well, first I gotta see if I can get out of this paralysis. Uh, nine. Not enough to get out of paralysis, but you can still move. Okay. Okay, let's see if Dig can redeem itself. Yeah, so Myra digs back underground. Oh, a tried and true method, it appears. But let's see if my reinforcements will have anything to say about that. And he pulls out another capsule. This one is blue. He pops another, like, blue candy out and throws it at the Nihilego. It just kind of lands on top of its head and gets absorbed into it. I'm going to roll Pokemon Education again. It's probably not going to be good. Yeah, that is. Yeah, no, that was a five. No, you still don't know what's going on with these pills. So, anyway. Have you tried asking? <laughs> She's curious! <laughs> Eleven. Right, roll for... Is that for paralysis or dig? Uh, paralysis. Okay, out of paralysis. Awesome. Now roll now for dig. Four! What's Dig's um, AC check? Oh, it's two, but there's also a minus two on that roll. Oh, sweet. That's going to hit then. So it's more like two. Because of hustle. Oh. Oh, I, I misread that then. Okay. Yeah, no, you take a minus two penalty on all your accuracy rolls, but you have that boosted damage. Okay. All right, then Dig is not going to hit. Once, like, Myra bursts out and Nihilego just floats a little bit out of reach. No! <laughs> Shit! I ground it. In optimal attempt. But now we shall attempt this. Nihilego, use your sight wave! 13 is going to hit. And now... Two. So Myra is going to lose 38 HP. Okay. It is not damage. She just loses it. Nihilego sends like psychic energy at her and just like... Down to 56. Myra used double kick. I know it hurts, honey, but... Two for the first. Yeah, that's gonna miss. Zero. Nine for the second. That one will hit. That's a seven. Okay, so that's 38 right there. All right. Oh, Myra will also heal a tick at the end of her turn. Why is that? Black Sludge. Oh, right. Because she has the uh, Black Sludge. Chomp, chomp. So tick is how much? Uh, that would a tick for Myra is nine. So close to being ten. So Myra runs in, runs in and does a kick, and the Nihilego they dodge the first one, but it puts him in a position that Myra can smack him with the second one. <laughs> but Nihilego is still looking strong. All right, now let us attempt a headbutt. And Nihilego rears back and launches itself at Myra, but Myra is able to scoot out of the way and the Nihilego just kind of bloops into the ground. Okay, Myra. Use Bite! 18. That is going to hit. Oh, it's flinched. It's a hit and it's a flinch, so how much damage is that first off? Uh, 44. And that is a strong enough bite that that knocks... You can tell the Nihilag was knocked into the yellow. It looks a little bit stiffer than it was before. And yeah, it the kind of just keels over to the side. It's not fainted yet, though, you can tell. Okay, we can keep going. Because it worked last time. Myra, use another double kick. Ten for the first. That one will hit. 
19 for the second. So Myra runs and kicks Nilego hard enough that it's launched into the air, and then Myra jumps, and it's not a kick. Myra was observing Wally Wilmer. <laughs> she grabs <laughs> Nilego, and she pile drives them directly into the mud. <laughs> Nidorina! Tombstone! <laughs> and Nilego goes stone stiff and then just kind of flops all loosey goosey. <laughs> and Gentium <laughs> takes the beast ball and returns it back. <laughs> Will, that was a very close battle, but I am extremely proud of the way that it turned out for you, Miss Beale Reed. Yeah, got a little bit hairy there, but... And you, young lady, and he points at Myra, Nidorina? You, you demonstrated some extreme prowess in that battle. I expected you to go head-to-head with the Needle King, and perhaps it did not work out quite in your favor, but the way you were able to take out an Ultra Beast, that was quite impressive. And he reaches into his coat pocket, and he pulls out two items. The first one is a badge, and it's shaped like a syringe with some purple leaves going around it. So first off, Miss Beale Reed, I present to you the Anti-Venom Badge. Thank you. And now, even though I hate that we have to do this, but please announce your obtaining of the Anti-Venom Badge. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah! I got the Anti-Venom Badge! And now, this is a gift for you and your Myra. And he hands you a little glass case, and inside is a very shiny rock shaped like a crescent moon. Is this what I think it is? Indeed. This is a moon-flavored lollipop. (laughs) Ah, I kid, I kid, it is a moonstone. I only give it to the trainers that I feel are ready. Now, I believe that you are ready. And if you do not believe you are ready, I understand. But I think you are ready. So I crouch down to Myra's head and I'm like, You ready? Irina! I present the moonstone. And she takes the moonstone in her little paws and she holds it up and she starts to glow. She gets bigger and brawnier. And grows until she's, like, just under your height. <laughs> Needle Queen! Yay! Give her a big hug, even though I know I'm probably gonna get poisoned. <laughs> oh no, her poison points don't point, point you. Okay. Nah! <laughs> Queen! You did it! Oh. Uh, it's always so beautiful when you see an idol meet their final form. <laughs> <laughs> I am very proud of you both. Thank you, Gentian. Oh, thank you. That was a very fun battle. I usually don't do gym battles because, well, usually I win. But this was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely would not have beaten Zinagana Delzo. No, I'm I'm not ready for that thing yet. All right, well, uh, I suppose we're done here. Time for me to lock up until next year, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> really that bad? I have very intimidating presence. I mean, fair enough. But then, since uh, we are done here, what does I want? I wonder. How your friend Gabriel is doing in his task. We cut over to Gabriel and Jackie as they approach the northern section of the Great Marsh, which is completely blocked off. They're like, not only are the official pathways like have boards in front of them and like chains and everything saying like danger, do not enter, but you can even see boards put up around the area with, like, flashing lights, and you even, like, you can see some Pokemon, they'll start to approach those, 
and then they see them and they turn around and they go the other way. Like this section of the marsh is forbidden. Well, even the local Pokemon are kind of uh, wary of this place. Yeah, they they know the danger of uh, Old Man Andre. But Andre, you say? Yep. Uh, oh, look! Here's one of his posters, and she pulls like a paper wanted poster off of a tree and hands it to you, and you see a picture of a, like an old grizzled scyther. And it says, uh, oh. warning, old man Andre has taken up residence in the Great Marsh. Do not <laughs> interact. If spotted, call the nearest Pokemon Ranger and run. Oh, jeez. That's a, a rough looking Scyther. Yeah, he's uh, he's known to terrorize a lot of Pokemon. He's extremely angry and extremely territorial. No one's ever gotten close enough to figure out why. And she reaches into her pocket, and she hands you six Safari Balls. Anyways, here's your final exam. What? And she pulls out a key, and she starts undoing the chains, and like opens a way into the northern section. Good luck! Uh, have I been the only one to attempt this, or... Oh, no, has, lots of people have. <laughs> and have they told their tale? Oh, he hasn't killed anyone, as far as we know. Oh, okay. I mean, this this is for helping somebody. He could be lost, he could be hurt. I'm just trying to... Br- to psych myself up. All right. Okay. I could do this. All right. And remember, if you do get grievously wounded, give us a shout and we'll come in to rescue you. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and as we fade out, we see Gabe start to enter the northern section of the Great Marsh. And then we pan over to Jackie, who looks after him with concern, and she says to herself, I really don't know what Gentian is thinking. Uh, That kid is either going to get injured or, oh, probably worse. Uh, Maybe I should send a letter into my favorite Murkrow. Thank you for listening to Pokemon Adventures in the Millennium. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at PKNN underscore Millennium, where you can also join our Discord. You can support the podcast on Patreon.com slash PKMN Millennium. We'd like to thank our current supporters on Patreon. Rookie Trainer Scott M. Novice Trainers Lisa Little Bear and Lindsay Mitchell. And Ace Trainers, MF, Dilly D, and Crimson Lotus 21. We'd like to thank the creators of Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri, Ken Sugimori, and Junichi Matsuda. We'd also like to thank the PTU dev team for making a game for us to play. 
We are a non-profit, fan-based parody. Pokemon is owned by the Pokemon Company, Game Freak, Creatures Incorporated, and Nintendo. Hey everybody, I'm Jake. I'm Josh. I'm Shannon. And I'm Alan. And we're the Cool Kids Table, a RPG podcast about shitty teens. And magical girls. And really bad D&D heroes. And just any other stuff we can get our hands on. And our D&D heroes aren't that bad. We didn't actually plan what to say for this, so I hope you're into people flying by the seat of their pants and just incapable of playing game systems correctly. And bad puns. Wonderful puns. So you can get all this and more every other Sunday over at the Cool Kids Table. And And you you can can sit sit with with us. us.